All right, a hyper geometric distribution. Um, so what we really want to compare this to is, is what we went over before. We went over binomial distributions. The actual random variable that we use with hypergeometric distributions, very similar to binomial distributions. Um, both of those random variables only have two outcomes. So like uh, success and failures. Um, they both count the number of successes in N trials. So we do have N trials like with the binomial. With the, remember when over Poison, N could be anything. It could just go on to infinity. Um, also, hypergeometric distributions have uh, finite populations. Okay, so we have we, instead of looking at a, a number of trials, there is n trials, but we look at some type of uh, finite um, population or set of outcome groups. Since they are so closely related, a small change in an experiment can switch the distribution of the random variable. Um, your book goes through an example just to kind of tell you how closely related they are. It says uh, a binomial experiment such as counting the number of red cards drawn in eight draws from a deck with replacement can be easily modified to a hypergeometric by not replacing the cards. So, if you think of taking a deck of cards and randomly drawing eight, but each time replacing, so the success and failure, uh, success and failure rate stays the same. You know, if I if I pull a card out and I don't replace it, depending on what that card is, it would change the next time I draw a card. Well, if you don't replace it, then it's not a binomial distribution. Because remember, with binomial distributions, the outcomes had to be equally likely every time. Well, if you don't replace those cards and the outcomes start changing, then that would be, you could modify it and change that into a hypergeometric distribution. Um, your book says since there are 26 red cards, which would be a success if we were trying to draw red cards or figure out the probability, and 26 black cards, which if we draw a black card, that's not a red card, so we would consider that to be a failure, then the probability of drawing a red card on the first draw would be 26 out of 52. Then if I don't replace it the second time, the probability is 25 out of 51 if it's a if we want to know if we drew a red card the first time. If we didn't draw a red card the first time, then that also changes the probability. So as probabilities are changing, it becomes a little more complex. Um, the formula for a hypergeometric distribution its a lot of combinations, a lot of different combinations in the formula. So remember I told you your book does a little different than I'm used to with combinations, but I'm going to write down exactly what it has because that'll, that's what's on your formula sheet. You have a combination of X given capital A times combination, we have N minus X 
and that is a lowercase n and then we have a uppercase n minus uppercase a. So these will actually be numbers so that you'd figure out numbers that would go there and all that's divided by the combination lowercase n given capital N. So we have to understand what all those variables mean to be able to use this formula. Capital A is the total number of successes possible. Capital N is the size of the total population. Now, with population, when it doesn't, we're not talking about people. You know, we could be, but like with the cards, the population was 52 because there were 52 cards. And then lowercase n is the size of sample drawn.